In this video, I am going to show you how to create port channel or ether channel or channel bonding between two chiral switches in the packet tracer environment. Ether channel and port channel are used interchangeably in Cisco environment. If you are creating the channel bonding in the chiral switch environment, that is called ether channel. But if you are creating the same thing in the Nexus iOS environment, that is called a port channel. As you know, the packet tracer iOS little limited in capabilities than the real iOS. However, when it comes to port channel creation, we will be using exactly same command like in a real switch. So when you configure the port channel in the packet tracer, basically you will be having the same kind of experience creating this port channel or ether channel in a real catalyst switches. I'm going to grab two catalyst multi-layer switches. These are the high-end switches in the packet tracer environment, Cisco 3650-24PS switches. These are modular switches, so you have to insert the power, otherwise it won't boot. Let me open the CLI. It says device must be powered on. Let me insert the power supplies. So now we start to connect these switches together using the uplink ports. I'm going to go to the link and I'm going to select crossover cable because you are using similar devices so you need a crossover cable. And you can see when I click on here, the uplink port gig 111 is not available. Even though you can see it in the show in status, but they are not available for you to connect. The reason is it is a modular switch. Go to the physical view and uplink ports does not have any optics. So I have to insert 1000 base T SFP optics. That is the only optics you can use in this environment. I'm going to insert all four of them. This is like a, you are inserting optics in a real Cisco switch environment. I'm going to do the same thing for this switch also. Okay, now I can start to connect them. You see now gig 111 is available. That goes to connect gig 111 on the other switch. Gig 112 and it connect to 112 here. So now you have connected these switches together. So let's start to configure the port channel. First, you need to create the port channel. Interface, if you hit the question mark, you will see the port channel here. Copy, paste, port channel, you need to give a number. You can give the number from one to 48. I will start with one. So now the port channel one has been created. So now let's go out of the config mode and see the port channel that we created. Show either channel summary. You can see the port channel created, but there are no ports in it. But if you issue a command show port channel summary, that won't work in the catalyst environment. This command only work in the Nexus environment. At the same time, this command doesn't work in the Nexus environment, only work in the catalyst environment. So now we need to assign port to the port channel. Conf t int gig 111 channel group. The group number can be 1 to 48. I'm going to say one mode. There are four modes. I'm going to use active mode. That is enable LSAP unconditionally. LSAP means link aggregation control protocol. This is the protocol used to negotiate either channel between these two catalyst switches. So I'm going to say active. Let's go to the command show ether channel summary. And you can see the port channel is down and gig 111 is independent. The reason is 
we did not issue the command on the other side. That's why you see this slide is still amber. So the port channel has not been formed. So let's go to the switch and do the same thing to bring up the port channel. Enable conf t interface port port channel 1 int gig 111 channel group 1 mode active. Now both ports should negotiate and form the port channel. And let's look at show ether channel summary. Now you can see the port channel is up and it is using LACP. Go to the other switch and let's see what this port channel is doing. Show ether channel summary. It is also up. So you can have a port channel just with one port and you can keep adding ports to the port channel. If you are having a port channel, you need to have at least two ports. Otherwise, there is no point of having a port channel. The idea around the port channel is if one port goes down, the port channel will stay up. Basically, the port channel is a virtual link. The spanning tree only see port channel one or any port channel. It doesn't see what are the ports behind the port channel. Because you remember when you have two ports connected between these two switches, one will be blocked by spanning tree. So you will have only one port available for the network traffic. And if that port goes down, other port will come up, but that will take some time for the spanning tree to bring up the other port. So you will have a real network outage. So if you have a port channel, basically if one port goes down, the spanning tree doesn't even notice that port went away from the port channel. Everything will work just fine. You will have enough time to fix that line and bring up into the port channel. So now let's configure the second port into the port channel. Conf T, I should have my previous commands. So I'm going to hit up arrow to get those commands. 112, channel group one mode active. I'm going to go to the other side of the switch. Conf T, 112, channel group one mode active. So now let's look at the ether channel summary. You have two ports in the ether channel, both are up. When it comes to port channel number, these are locally significant. So you can have port channel one in this switch and you can have port channel 10 in this side. It doesn't matter. If this video is useful to you, give me a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification for future video updates.